Hey, there's nothing wrong with a good burger. What, what about um, bugs? Would you ever eat bugs? Only in a desperate situation. <laughs> okay. And I guess I got to know if it's poisonous or not. Because, I mean, if I'm going to try to do a scorpion, too, I got to make sure I know where the poisonous glands are. Okay, cool. All right. Hey. Well, welcome to KM Can Drum. This is another installment of... Uh, Q and A with Cam Ken Drum. I'm here with Brian Gribben. Brian, how's it going? Hey Kelly, how you been, bud? Good, good. How about you? <clears throat> Busy, Busy, to say the least, uh, both work wise and also I've been going out doing a lot of interviews with other people. When I last night, I think I cranked out like ten messages to like say like, hey, you want to go on my podcast and that sort of thing. So I think, needless to say, I got like half responses back. So so far, so good. Cool, cool, man. Yeah, anyone who doesn't know Brian, check out his channel. I'll put a link to his channel on the description. Uh, you can check it out. He does covers, he does interviews, he does all kinds of stuff, podcast stuff and whatever. whatever. Um, very cool channel. Uh, so this, uh, I was able to, or you were able to interview me uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now I get to return the favor. So um, my interview process, I don't know if you've checked out some of my old interviews in the past, but I like to spread it out into three different um, sections. First, I'll ask uh, a few drum questions, and then I, I like to try to get into the mind and the person of the drummer, uh, uh, behind the drummer. So I like to ask questions that you might get at a job interview, and then questions that you might get at a speed dating um, event, kind of to keep it fun and, and light and get to know the person behind the drummer. <laughs> I don't know what I walked myself into, but this ought to be interesting. So, <laughs> yes. but at least now we can call it even. So I interviewed you, so you interview me now. So, have at it, brother. Cool, man. All right. Well, we'll we'll start with the easy ones. We'll start with the drum ones. Um, first of all, how long have you been playing with drums? This one, I tend to change my answer a little bit because people have asked me that question. Because in my interview process, as you learned, as we near the end, I tend to give my interviewees a little bit of freedom to ask me anything. And some of the question is, like, how long have you been doing drums? And, <clears throat> excuse me. I would say a little over a decade. I lost count after a little while there, there because in my stories, I started off as a strings guy. I had played cello for throughout my elementary, middle school, and high school years. They didn't have it at college, so unfortunately it dropped off there and then started collecting dust. So I sold my cello, and then I started getting into Rock Band, the video game. I played one, two, and three, played all those games. I was obsessed with it for a good while. And uh, my parents realized I really loved playing on the drums. I picked it up one day and just started playing on it. It was just the electric pad with the yellow, red, blue, green, and the orange foot pedal. So when they realized it wasn't a fad, they asked, like, hey, you want to try out drums and stuff like that? And they didn't want to do acoustic. So living with yeah. the parents and... It's not the best insulated kind of house. The sound travels through really easily. So they didn't want to get an acoustic sound, just had to deal with the noise. And so I having to pound on my drums pretty hard and then also play for a good while too, maybe about an hour at most. So fortunately, they were able to find an electric kid from a store not too far from a house here. So we just got an electric kid one of these days. I forget what brand it was. It might have been a Roland, but it was not those ones that I kind of roll with now, which is a TD Roland 25K. And I did that for a good few months. And then I think it was around Christmas when I finally got the current kit that I have right now. So it's about the long answer to your question. So, Oh, awesome. I love long answers. They're, they're the best. They, they're the ones that get um, most of the information out and people to get to know you better. So oh, that's cool. Ten years, uh, give or take a few years or so. That's a, that's a good amount of time. Um, <clears throat> now, have you been able to kind of find your own voice on the drums? Uh, I've done more of the covers since, uh, I think I told you I was more of a metal guy in our last interview. Mm. So what do you mean by voice? You mean like kind of like I'm able to kind of make my own rhythms and stuff like that, kind of like what jazz drummers could do? Um, I mean, a little bit of that, but more more so like have you have you kind of, like for me, uh, I'm more of a single pedal guy. I only use double pedal if I really, really, absolutely have to. But I try to do everything on a single pedal. Um, you know, as, as far as like 
maybe not necessarily voice, but more like your style and and uh, mannerisms and things that you like and don't like. Uh, hopefully I can answer this, but uh, in terms of uh, style, I like keeping things at least a little close together because, like I said, I am mostly into metal and rock and stuff like that. Normally, I like to play with double foot pedal because the biggest thing with metal is that it's able to work everything up here a little bit harder. So it's a nice exercise after probably doing it for a good hour and stuff like that. I would say I have goofed around with the blast beats, mainly like one foot blast beats back then. I kind of shied away from doing like one foot blast because I found like if I'm focusing on it too much, I'm working on this side of the brain and it probably causes me to like screw up if I'm doing something with my hands. So I like to do more two foot and stuff like that. Normally the music calls for a lot of two foot, but I would say every now and again, I might do rocks where it's just simple, just doing with one foot and stuff like that. And then some is keeping it simple. And I also like to be able to move between my snare toms and make sure my hi-hat and crashes and rides are all within good range. So I'd yeah. say I've molded <clears throat> other play styles into what I currently have. So, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's exactly uh, the type of answer I, I try to get from from people because um, it's it's really easy to kind of fall into a black and white type of thing. But really, I think where us drummers find our individuality is in the gray area where we kind of um, borrow from other genres, from other styles, from other people, and kind of make it our own. So. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. It's a it's a good uh, insight into how your mind works and how you apply it to the drums. Well, that's how it works with pretty <clears> much <throat> anything, really. And even in terms of art, too, that's how the great artists, they borrowed concepts from other artists and authors borrow maybe certain writing styles and anything else from other authors, so to speak. So it kind of yeah. it goes both ways, so to speak. Totally. Cool. Well, uh, you, you, I know you say you're pr predominantly electric. But do you ever play acoustic? Like, do you ever go out and, and play with bands or whatever and play an acoustic set? Uh, back then, I used to, I did a couple sessions with a cover band. They were going to do like 90s alternative music, like Smashing Pumpkins and stuff like that. They did have an acoustic set, and it was a bit of a culture shock at first, but it didn't take too long for me to like get adapted to everything and try to figure out the patter patterns and then try to move between everything else. So it wasn't too much, but... Recently, nah, I've been really sticking with electric too. And I have to say, I get annoyed with comments, and especially with people who don't like the electric sets too. They think acoustic sets should be now and forever, sort of that sort of saying. But I feel like in terms of the environment of like what you live in, for instance, you have to make do with like playing on an electric set too. But there's also a lot of work that we put into it too. And I want people to also recognize we are still drummers. We're just playing on something different. I could easily play a song on an acoustic set if I wanted to, but the thing is I can't do it with the environment that I'm living in. So you can kind of see what I'm saying. So, yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting that, um, cause I've, you know, I started my YouTube channel on an acoustic set. I don't think I've ever did any video or cover or anything with an electric set. So my, my channel is all acoustic. I've never had anyone come and tell me anything bad about playing an acoustic set, saying something like, oh, you should play electric or whatever. So for me to kind of switch it to the other side, um, I would never, you know, impede on somebody else's channel and tell them what to do. That's that's kind of rude. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. It could be the trolls, too. The trolls of Moria, as yeah. I like to call them. So, yeah. <laughs> For the Lord of the Rings kind of action there. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so, you know, I've got some other... I'm looking at a question right here, and I was, it's, uh, do you play Guitar Hero or Rock Band? Obviously, you already answered that one. Um, I did play a little Guitar Hero a little bit back then, but that's strictly... It was more Guitar Hero 3, and that one, it's just strictly either guitar or bass. And I think it was later on when they finally started doing drums, but that was well after Rock Band had finally beat him to it, so... yeah. So, uh, what do you, uh, do you still play? I haven't played recently. In fact, uh, actually, no. I think I still have the guitar, but it's like upstairs. But I threw away my drums because the foot pedals kept breaking and everything because 
their years of abuse and stuff like that. So, <laughs> but no, I haven't really done it recently. In fact, I haven't touched video games in a while, and I've been meaning to kind of get back into it because I'm actually seeing a couple guys in our community. They're getting on Twitch and stuff like that. I know Twitch is also a big platform for people who have played on video games. So, nice little idea. Maybe something <laughs> to do, something to do in the near future. So, and well, sorry, my AC kicked on too. So, sorry to hear a lot of uh, background noise. <laughs> That's not that bad. Um, <clears throat> so, would it be safe to say that you like the real thing over the video game, or are they separate and equally as, as enjoyable? They can be. I think uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things on Rock Band that are missing. Obviously, the hi hats when you do the splashes is not the same as like hitting the pad. So, obviously, with the hi hat on the electric or acoustic set, you're just opening it up. You can't do that on Rock Band or any of the other video games. You have to hit a different pad in order to simulate that sound, so to speak. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I've never played those games, so I don't really know. The difference between the two I, I don't have an opinion on it um but that's interesting to know uh it's kind of like a different challenge almost yeah obviously you see people with like the real big sets and the big uh symbols i guess whatever you call them to kind of hang it up in here and all that and then numerous toms and uh any percussion instruments because i know they did a couple of rush especially where neil pert's like playing like class, for instance, you just hit like the yellow or blue pads, whereas he probably turns this way, is like hitting it that way. So, yeah, it's a fun <laughs> game, but it's not the real deal, so to speak. Cool. Um, do you have any favorite drummers that are just right off the top of your head? <laughs> well, the list could really go on, to be honest, because given rock and metal, since they produce like such talented drummers too. Like, we start off with classic rock. Yeah, John Bonham, Keith Moon, Neil Peart. Peter Chris actually started dawning on me, too, because I know a couple of people in other interviews I do, they brought him up as well. Let's see. Uh, it's Peter Chris. Bill Ward with uh, originally Black Sabbath. I know. I don't think he's been back ever since. And uh, those are really the ones that come off the mind, but they're obviously, like, the real big names. So I feel bad not knowing those ones, but... <laughs> In the metal community, the ones I know I mentioned George Corleus as being one of my big influencers. Uh, Pete Sandoval, formerly of Morbid Angel and Terrorizer now. Let's see. Oh, always trying to name and things, and it's always tough to. Uh, I can never pronounce his name, but he's from Poland and he's in the death metal band Behemoth, but his uh, nickname is Inferno. And uh, let's see. Mitch Harris from uh, Napalm Death would be another one. Originally Napalm Death. I don't know what he's been doing now. I think he's been jumping all over the place doing other projects. But really, you're just kind of molding all their play styles into your own, too. So to really say favorite drummer, I feel like that's doing it in injustice. So I would say those drummers are my favorites, cool. at least. So. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, I mean, I love doing these interviews because... Um, I'm not really into metal too much. I don't I don't hate it, but I just am not into it. So whenever I talk to drummers that are into genres that I'm not specifically into, it's always good to hear these names and I, I can study up on them and, and check them out. So that's cool. But you were more into the <clears throat> punk music, right? Because that's what you talked about. Yeah, I grew up uh, playing punk rock and um, more, more of the poppy stuff, poppy rock uh yeah top 40 type type of stuff not, not i didn't really get i mean i got into some of the more popular metal bands like um back in the day metallica of course pantera sepultura those types of slayer those types of bands but i never really dove into that genre so much so <clears throat> but it's it's good to hear like um different drummers that i can go and check out and you know it's funny you mentioned that you mentioned those names too because I was thinking like why didn't I think of those names? It was obviously yeah. Lars Ulrich, Dave Lombardo, yeah. Paul Bostov later on. I know he came a little later in Slayer. Uh, Charlie Benante. I think it was Max Cavalera on drums with Sepultura. I think. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I could be wrong, but I know. Or uh, I think Max was the guitar player. Igor was the drummer. Ah, uh, okay. 
but yeah, regardless too, it was sick drumming on Sepultura too, uh, especially yeah. with the song Territory. Yeah, I love that song. Absolutely. Cool. Um, okay, going from favorite all-around drummers, do you have any favorite YouTube drummers? There's plenty in our community, to be honest, and I think they're probably going to hate me if I pick just one drummer out of all of them. So, yeah. but uh, I know Chris, uh, aka Throwback Drummer, he's uh, his style of play is pretty cool too. And I know he's got make do because I think he's got like four kids to really deal with. So, but he's also a native Pennsylvania too. He's he lives in around Philly as well. So I know you said you're not too far away from that city either. But I, I would say. His, his, his play style is actually really good too so shout out to chris and then i'll give a shout out to ash wells and that's just gonna take a little bit of criticism too because he uses sheet music because i guess he's still learning how to at least do drums i don't know when eventually he'll drop in and try to aka feel the music and he gets criticized for not like feeling the music when like i think they mean like you're able to listen to it and you're able to decipher what goes where like how many hi hats, hi hat hits you need to do here when the bass comes in and stuff like that. So, but he's been a big help, and I know he's been a big influencer and driving force in our drum community too, along with Drumman One Ninety, who's another fellow out of Pennsylvania too. I don't know if have you interviewed Drumman yet or no? I think I asked him a long time ago, and it just never worked out. So I haven't, but uh, he would be on my list for sure. <clears throat> I did too, but yeah, he. He's so busy, but I'd say try again. And that's why I wanted to bring you, him, Chris, and me do a whole thing with all the drummers out of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Just like nice little get together. But I know your schedule's, I guess, tied, whatever your work schedule's like. So and, uh, I actually reached out to another drummer last night to see if she wanted to come on. And her name was uh, Jackie Cass. I think she was the first drummer I had. Uh, subscribe to when I had come on YouTube. So I think the I haven't seen any of her recent videos, but I know her style play was pretty good. I think she was doing Paramore Ain't and Fun. I think that's what it was called. Ain't and Fun, I think was the song name. And it was it was pretty good. And then she's she does a bunch of other stuff too. I think uh she'll talk about a channel like uh, any sort of comments she gets or I guess any updates and stuff like that. So she does a whole lot. So cool. and then I reached out to Thomas Lang, and uh, actually, I know Drum Man. I'd interviewed him, and I heard his name mentioned around a couple of times, especially with playstyles and even in my interviews. So he was another one, and I wanted to check him out too. So I would say, at least just in like drummers on YouTube, I'd say those would be the list that I can provide. So cool, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other drum questions before we go to the next section uh okay I, we'll, we'll end it with this one okay if you could play on any one famous drummer's kit now or in the past who would it be Oof. that's a tough one <laughs> i think if i wanted to pick between you know, classic rock or metal or specifically death metal to uh I think in classic rock, Neil Peart, just because I wanted to at least know what it's like doing the whole 360, the, the whole kit and everything too. Just to goof around on it. And then I don't know about officially taking, up, taking it up, but at least just to goof around on it. Uh, I guess in metal, I don't really know because I know some drummers don't really go as crazy as like other people do. I know people like to keep it simple. I think George Corleus. I would go with George Corleus as kid. Just to know what what his mindset is whenever he's playing. So, in other words, to be in his shoes. So, cool, cool, awesome. All right, well, uh, let's segue into the next section, which is uh, job related questions. So basically, you're in, interviewing for a job. I'm interviewing you for this job, yeah. and uh, I don't know when the last time you ever went on a job interview is was, but uh, this might maybe. Uh, work on work on your job interview skills <laughs> uh i would say i think it was earlier this year when i first did my interview to get into my current position so ah at least got some at least okay. some recollection so, so you, you should be uh you should be prepared for this one 
All right. Let's go, uh, HR. <laughs> what are your strengths? In terms of drumming? Uh, in terms of just you as a person. Okay. Dedication, being meticulous. I know I like what needs done whenever it comes to like a specific project. And then, I mean, I'm a pretty open person. I, once I get to know you a little bit more, obviously, and I can be friendly. I can be your best friend or your worst enemy, so to speak. So just at least kind of give a nice little short answer too, but that's at least the main stuff too. But really pretty cool, easy going sort of thing. I really want to try to see the good in people, but I tend to get a little pessimistic when people just want to keep showing me the bad side of things. So if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what about your weaknesses? Do you have any of those? I tend to do a lot more than I probably should. Okay. Which is obviously I do work two jobs. The other one's kind of a little bit more flexible because it is a friend of the family. So we can at least just go there and I can at least try to work out the schedule, even though he might pull my leg and like <laughs> he always jokes around whenever it comes to like I want to schedule vacation and stuff like that. So but also try to do this podcast, keeping up with the YouTube channel. Or can actually get my real job, which I'm actually on lunch break right now, so that's why I'm <laughs> able to make this work. <laughs> and really trying to get into radio and stuff like that. So the radio is kind of a little bit of a different story, but I was thinking of doing stuff like documentaries and stuff like that, and then writing. So that would be the biggest one. I tend to overload myself when I probably shouldn't. And it really should be prioritized, or at least have a little bit of an organization behind it. So. Okay, um, <clears throat> I could I, I could totally relate to that one. Uh, <coughs> who is your? Do you have any mentors or idol? Not not necessarily idols, but people that you look up to, as far as from a, a work standpoint, like their work ethic and and how they carry themselves. Mm, I would say anybody I worked with in my current <clears throat> my current job. Pretty much anyone that I have worked with in my real jobs. I just want to keep that confidential, so just for the purposes. But everyone I worked with, uh, the managers, they were all really good people. I would say the jobs are not something you want to spend the rest of your work life doing, but at least the people you were there with, really super cool. They really helped out and everything. So uh, I'd say those people, did you also mean like music-wise or just strictly even in the work world? Yeah, anything, anyone. I would say, in terms of writing, the authors I kind of looked up to, uh, one was Steven Erickson, and his, his book series I'm reading right now, it's called Miles on Book of the Fallen. And then, you're going to laugh at this one, but ironically, George R. R. Martin, who's uh, written the Game of Thrones series, I don't know if you ever watched the series on HBO. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I would say I like the way he does his style, even though... <laughs> It's funny too because it takes them over ten years then to write book number six, and we've already like finished the whole series and everything. So, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what the work ethics there, but I would say, in terms of like how he does do his writing and everything else, I like his realism behind it, so to speak. So, and I mean, really, this could go on, but to be honest, I think everyone in the drum community, because I know Mike Few, Ash Wells. Uh, Sacha Eldridge, aka Virtua Drummer. Everyone's kind of got a lot kind of going on too, and they, regardless of whether it's like health issues or anything like work related or family issues, so I have to give a lot of credit to what they're doing. So I look up to what they're doing, and then I try to at least match it at the very best, or at least try to mimic it. So cool. <clears throat> All right. So as far as, um, you know, everybody trying to do this drum thing when they've got life pushing them from tapping them on the shoulder from behind. Hey, hey you got to you got to do life first. Um, yeah, it does add a lot of pressure uh, to constantly try to put content up on your channel, whether it's drum covers or interviews or whatever, whatever the case. So I guess my next question would be. How do you think you handle pressure? Are you good under pressure? 
do you need to work on that? Is, is that something that you thrive on? It needs kind of a little bit of work. I kind of get a little impatient whenever it first starts to happen. After a couple of minutes, it's like after I start realizing what takes priority first, I do that. And then I figure like, okay, if I got some time, I'll do this next. Then if I still have a little bit more time, I feel like, okay, I can make this work. So prioritizing cool. and prioritizing is the big thing you got to do in those situations. Yep. I, I totally agree. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, let's see. I think I've got a couple of more questions. Um, this is a one that I think every HR person asks, where do you see yourself in five years? I know there was a, I think there was a family guy episode where they actually kind of talk about that question too. And I know Peter Griffin, he was like, don't say doing your wife. Don't say doing your wife. Don't say doing your wife. <laughs> doing your son. <laughs> Uh, so I, I always think of that one. I always think of that scene whenever it comes up too. So, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, futures can be unpredictable because really the whole thing with this podcast, it came up so much later in life than I thought it would. Originally when I had went off to college, I was thinking of becoming a cop actually, but I know my mom, she had her worries about trying to get into that sort of field, and you can obviously see why. But And this kind of a little annoyed me, too, because I've always kind of got angry at myself, thinking, like, your passion, you had a passion for something, but then something else came along, and you really wanted to do that, and it was like, why didn't this come along sooner? Mm. So it jumped around a little bit. I mean, I hadn't really thought about YouTube. I thought it was too much about, too much like to get into or anything like that. I was like, all right, I'll just watch, see what's all out there. Maybe watch clips of movies and like stuff. I look at that. So I'd say after the initial success of doing this podcast and being able to interact with people like you, I really want to just keep going with this. I hope to finally break the thousand subscriber mark. I think with some of the people I've reached out to, I'm hoping at least get it maybe sometime next year, which be, which would be nice, even though it seems like it always takes a while to like break that sort of barrier. So it would be nice to get there and eventually try to at least monetize, try to at least make something from the podcast too. I got a life to at least live and I got at least money to spend. So that much would be nice. So, and it helps pay for the retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really try to be some sort of influencer in some way. I want people to realize and kind of get a little bit serious here too there is a crisis of meaning and i want people to realize that you're special even though you maybe have like a small channel regardless of your limitations or whatever it is that is playing with you you mean something so and i'm trying to also show like i'm the, one of those people who care and i'm willing to share your story so that would be the hope so that's so, that's awesome and eventually at least publish my first book Cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, uh, kind of off topic, but uh, what kind of book would it be? Like, what uh, what genre would it be? Uh, first, I had a couple short stories, but uh, those ones I had two written down, and I've been meaning to actually get an editor to finally finalize those, so I can just get those out there. I did have a couple ideas for children's books, and my aunt gave me a couple ideas. Now I just need to figure out how to put that together. But the book would actually be epic fantasy, believe it or not. So like the Game of Thrones kind of book in a way. I actually did have like the synopsis written down. It may alter maybe some bits here and there just to add like the feel to it or make it a little bit more realistic. So it would be epic fantasy. Cool. Have you, uh, how far into, is it just the synopsis? Have you gone further? Have you made any drafts? Just the synopsis. I thought I had, at least part of the intro, the prologue written down, but I think I lost it somehow. So he has to say, I need to start over with that. But I think I wanted to change something around. So hopefully start getting into it this week. So cool. I mean, have you heard of, um, it's not necessarily a contest, but it's, it's like a, some sort of participation. It's called NaNoWriMo. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, I've seen things on Facebook. They'll say, like, you win $10,000 if you 
engage in this sort of contest, whether it's like writing an intro for a book or some sort of poem or whatever. So I don't know if that's sort of recognition, but I think uh, I've been mean to maybe try to get involved in something like that. So maybe eventually, but I think not right now. So yeah, well, um, NaNoWriMo is more like, it's kind of more for yourself, basically, um, cause I used to do the, the same thing too. I was like really into wanting to write my own book and, and all that stuff. So, um, so I went to school for that. Uh, I have a bachelor's in, uh, creative writing for entertainment. And one of the things that they made me do was enter into NaNoWriMo. I'll send you a link to it or maybe I'll, I'll leave a link in the description as well. So other people can check it out too. But if you're interested in writing a book, this quote unquote contest um, it kind of forces you to write, I think it's 50,000 words, which is like the normal length of a book, uh, within the month of November. And they give you all these different tools to help you do that. And, um, it, so in my case, I had a book, um, I had already, I think a first draft and what it helped me do was kind of edit it down and, make me more disciplined as far as how much I should be writing per day, um, what my goals should be for writing each of these things, not only every day, but every week and then for the whole month. So kind of organize the way that you write, um, whether it's a book or um, I think they even have uh, guidelines for like little novelettes, like 25,000 words, so half half of uh, a novel. But it's, it's it's really cool. As a writer, um, I would suggest checking it out. It's a good exercise, even if you don't use it for the book that you are, like, having in your head. If you just want to use it as, as an exercise to just write something, I think it's a good way of um, just getting in there and, and seeing the discipline that a lot of people are kind of um, following. And then you can kind of, you know, make your own discipline after that. It's just a good guide to to go through, a good exercise to go through. That sounds good. I would actually like that. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go to the last section, uh, the 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 fun section called speed dating questions. Um, basically, you know, if you were at a speed dating event and you were trying to uh, find the love of your life, your soulmate, these are some questions that maybe they might ask. So, um, uh, you ready? <laughs> I think this might be a reason to keep staying single. But go ahead. <laughs> All righty. Well, um, okay. I guess the uh, the first one is, uh, do you like camping or do you like staying at a hotel? If you say camping, do you mean like with the pitch tents and everything? Is that what you mean? Or is it kind of like how Deer Valley? I say Deer Valley because I know there's a spot out in Pennsylvania that has like those little cabins and stuff that are close together or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Not glamping. We're, we're talking about camping, like the real deal. Uh, Hotel. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to take a risk with the uh, camping there in that sort of situation. I'll do it with the cabin, but definitely not with the tents and everything. Because I I've heard some bad stories with bears and any sort of wildlife. So hotel. Cool. Bear All right. Island, sorry. No. Uh, no. No. No shame in that. I I love a good hotel too. Uh, dogs or cats? Uh, definitely not a small dog, but I would say medium sized dog. I, I'm okay with cats too, so either or is fine. All right. I can't do small dogs. No small dogs. <laughs> but definitely not the. But definitely more of the in between kind of dogs, like the shepherds, huskies. I had one that's a Catahoula dog upstairs, and she's a nice dog too. I probably would draw the line after a mastiff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. All righty. Um, are you a coffee or a tea person? None of the above. Oh, really? I don't drink coffee, and I never really got into tea or anything, so nope. All right, good to know. Uh, what's your favorite food? Burgers. Nice. Uh, especially cheeseburgers. All right. Um, uh, do, you, do you get uh, adventurous at all? Do you do seafood, like sushi or anything? I mean, I'll do seafood, like with the fish, scallops, shrimp, and uh, those kind of stuff. I would say maybe not the hardcore stuff like the sushi and stuff like that, but I mean, I'll branch out every now and again. So I think it depends on like what's in it and then 
try it out right there. So, but I would say, unfortunately, I eat a health, unhealthy lifestyle nonetheless. So, it's safe to say, burgers have been the big thing that I've eaten throughout my life too, and many people can attest to that. So, <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with a good burger. W- what about um, bugs? Would you ever eat bugs? Only in a desperate situation. <laughs> and I guess I got to know if it's poisonous or not. Because, I mean, if I'm going to try to do a scorpion, too, I got to make sure I know where the poisonous glands are. Yeah. I mean, I <clears throat> I know in, if you go to places like Thailand or lots of uh, South Asian places, they uh, they eat bugs on the reg. So I don't, I don't know if um, – yeah, I don't think I would be able to do that. <laughs> uh, I think if I was adventurous, if I was feeling it and I was actually in Thailand – or any of those other sort of countries. I think after a good beer, I might actually <laughs> want to try one. So, all right. Well, that was my next question: uh, beer or wine? I can sometimes drink wine, but it has to be a nice occasion too. And I can only drink certain kinds. I like, you know, normally the grape kind of wine. I might do a white Zinfandel every now and again, but I feel like the occasion has to call for it. If it's more of a party, I feel like you need to have the beer there. So, got it. I guess, which brand do you drink? I don't actually drink. I stopped drinking uh, a while ago. So uh, both for health reasons and just because I'm older, I don't get the same uh, pleasure out of it like I used to. Are you happy drunk at least? Uh, yeah, I was I was a happy drunk. I was, I would do things because I'm very even keeled. Uh, very chill, relaxed, and whenever I would drink, it would bring the good, crazy side out of me. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was the same way too. I do remember first night when I went crazy with a couple of Long Islands and uh, Jack Daniels on the rocks. So I was a happy drunk, to say the least. So I at least drink responsibly, but I don't drink like at home, for instance. I would normally, if I'm out with friends or anything, I would at least grab one then and just have a drink. But drink responsibly. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> um, have you traveled anywhere fun lately? Uh, not yet, but we have a trip planned up. Actually, a couple of trips planned up. One is actually going out west. We are going out to Utah and then all around Arizona. Uh, visiting the National Park. I think we end up in Vegas near the end. So Nice. And then... Uh, I forget which months we are going, but I know we planned some trip to Italy. Oh, wow. So that's at least getting something going there because obviously with COVID, we were a little restricted from going outside the borders. So we stuck to going to places in the States. I would recommend Saratoga Springs, maybe for just a week because it is a kind of a, of a small town. It's not very huge, but I know the horse track is pretty fun to go see, do a little gambling as well. And, uh, I kind of wish we did like the salt baths when we were up in Saratoga. So, uh, it's really about it because I know we've gone south a couple times to like Georgia and Florida. What's your favorite spot to go vacation? It used to be Florida because uh, we got family down there and everything. I don't really know now because I feel like we always want to kind of like change it up a little bit to like go see other places. Florida used to always be like the big hot spot too, given the reason with Disney Universal, uh, Bush Gardens, which was you near know, Tampa. Back then, when we were when I was real young, that used to be the biggest hot spot that we always go to for spring break or anytime over the holidays. Cool. All right. Um, <clears throat> what's your favorite movie? <sighs> That's tough because. Uh, you know, I kind of backed away from the movies, too. But I do remember me and a friend, we actually went to go see The Avengers. Not in game, it was uh, Infinity. That's right. It was Avengers and Infinity. That's the one where we saw Thanos when he did the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> thing. So uh, that one was pretty good. I will admit, the Marvel movies, I kind of wish I had saw them all in order. Because I know my sister, she had did something like that with like watching every single movie in the Marvel verse that Disney had taken over in order. So there was that, uh, watched a lot of Lord of the Rings back in the day, including the extended editions. 
and those were always fun to watch. Same with the, the Hobbit series that they came out with. So mm. I really have to say for those because I've seen those the most and I've enjoyed those the most watching with my family. So cool. Um, if you could invite anyone, dead or alive, to have dinner with, who would it be? Some shady. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, wow. Uh, that list goes on too. I'm. I feel like Ryan James Dio actually for some reason. I don't know why, huh. but I think I think I would do it so I could just make him a mixed stage, makeshift stage, and then somehow get Rainbow. I guess all the guys who are in Ryan James, or not Ryan James, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Or even like Dio's uh, solo project that he was doing. Just bring all those together and just like play it right out there and just blast it loud for the whole neighborhood to hear and everything. So I, know I like <laughs> listening to his music. Uh, Ozzy would be a funny one to have around too. So Ozzy Osbourne. So let's see. I know Ronnie James Dio, he had passed away a few years back. So rest in peace to him. Uh, For some reason, I think I would invite Barney Greenway from Napalm Death. For some reason, I feel like that'd be a fun one to do. You know, it would just be us, you know, just chilling, like just drinking a six pack or doing whatever and just playing video games and shit like that. So <laughs> I feel like stuff like that. Those would at least be the main names. Everything else, I think, it would just have to be like a giant Woodstock area because there's a stage not too far from where I live. So uh, I think any musicians and stuff like that. I think I would have to run out that stage and then just like have them all perform on it just so we can get a nice crowd and just do witch stock of 2022 <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know we kind of talked about this uh, when you interviewed me <clears throat> and I believe you said football. Do you play any sports? Not recently. That was back then. Uh, in my college days, but I hung out my helmet for good after senior year that was back in uh, 2014 but i really haven't played sports in a while it was funny too because there were still coaches that i knew from my high school days that were still up at the high school and i just decided one day like okay i'm just gonna go work out with them one day i realized how out of shape i was when i <laughs> tried to do some of the same stuff they're doing because they're doing like crab walks and stuff like that. I feel like I can't even do this for like 30 seconds, man. Yeah. So, but it was good to see him. And I think if I was a tech, I sport again, it would just be like a softball league or I don't know, deck hockey, to be honest. But I don't know. I really don't know if they have like a adult semi pro league or anything like that. So I don't know. So I haven't touched sports in a while. So. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve? I always, I have to laugh, but, uh, when you say pet peeve, do you mean like, uh, something that annoys you or something you really love? Something that just really gets under your skin. Stupidity. And then needless to say, a lot of it happens to come from the media making all sorts of noise and stuff like that. But I think that would be everybody's pet peeve, too, because it's some sort of stupidity in some sort of way. So <laughs> needless to say that it seems like you find a lot of people who are like jacking up that sort of sort of sort of thing. And it just tends to annoy you, too. So so I know it's a broad category, but it's like people who do stupid things for all the stupid reasons. Let alone like to say the wrong reasons, to say the least. So. That'd be the biggest thing. And that's kind of thing that's been weighing on my mind. And seeing all that in terms of anger, too, it kind of threw me into a little bit of a depression run a couple of times during the pandemic here. So I kind of need to say fell down and kind of found my way back up, kind of doing stuff like this. So having these sort of interactions, it's very helpful. So thank you for having me on, too, here, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure to have you. <clears throat> um, yeah, I. <sighs> I don't know if I can really elaborate on that, but I think when whenever I encounter something that I would think uh, falls under the category of stupidity, um, 
I'm recently uh, a convert. I don't know if it's converted or whatever the, whatever the term is, but I've recently found Jesus. I think I talked to you a little bit about that on our interview. And before, when I was agnostic and didn't believe in anything, uh, I would see stupidity all the time, and it would bother the heck out of me. Now, uh, I don't see it as much. I mean, I know it's out there. It's definitely out there. Um, but when I do see something that my old self would call stupid, oh, you're that's so stupid, or you're being so stupid, now it's more like, oh, you just, maybe you just don't understand, or maybe you only sing one point of view or whatever. And it's kind of like, instead of me getting angry, I get more just like sort of disappointed, like how you, it, it takes you into a sort of depression. Um, but I also try to like see it from both sides and it kind of, I don't know if that's because I've become Christian or just because I've gotten older or whatever the case is. But um, yeah, I just, I, it's funny how, um, stupidity is what is the thing that you bring up, and for me, uh, it's there's there's less of it out there. I see less of it. It's, it's definitely there. I don't get me wrong, but the way that my eyes see it, it's less stupidity and, and more just misunderstanding or something like. I don't know. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly or not. No, uh, <clears throat> it's it's some sort of misunderstanding or like something who twist it something and turn it on its head and then people just happen to believe that that's the right way to go i think the term is born again christian actually so mm. yeah that's exactly what i am yeah so and i did congratulate you for that so congrats on that and i guess also giving up drinking too i know that's kind of a bad habit and i know people have sometimes abused it for all the wrong reasons so and my congratulations to you bud good to see you living a good life yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny because you know when when you're a drummer and especially when you're uh, in a, a gigging drummer playing in bands and recording and that whole lifestyle, uh, you know, drinking, smoking, doing drugs, being a crazy person like that, it's all it goes hand in hand. Like you don't even like for me when I started playing drums, it wasn't to do any of that stuff. It was purely just to play music. I mean, I was 13, 12, 13 years old when I started playing drums, and not, not soon, not not far after me starting to play in bands and hanging out with other people, older people, um, I started drinking and I started smoking, and then not far after that, I started doing drugs and started, you know, all the girls that come along with it. It's like it's a fast life. Um, so you know, that was all my teens and twenties and early thirties. And it just kind of flushed out of my system. Now I have a family, I have a wife that I love, and uh, I found God, and that's kind of replaced all of that other stuff. So I don't really even, I mean, quitting was easy to me. Like, it wasn't like how other people, like I have friends that try to quit over and over and over, and they just can't do it. For me, it was like a, a really easy thing to to quit the drugs, quit the drinking, quit the smoking, and um, just focus on this new next li- next chapter of my life. Yeah, and I never quite understood that too, why it's easier for some people to do it, but other people will just relapse over and over again. So it's a mystery. Yeah. Needless yeah. to say. So. <clears throat> I, if, 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 I could, <laughs> if I could figure out what it was and then write it down on a book, I think I would be a bestseller. <laughs> yes, you'd be a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> yeah. Kelly Kusoboto, number one, <laughs> New York Times, number one bestseller. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I'm looking at all of these questions, and pretty much we've covered most of them uh, just by talking and, and uh, getting to know one another and whatnot. Oh, okay, last one. It's a pretty important one. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> yeah, I got that one a lot. The majority of the time, Coke. I'll sometimes drink Pepsi because I'm kind of one of those people who say, like, I don't really see much of a difference. It's maybe a t- difference in taste. If you have it, I'll drink it. But majority of the time, I go for Coke because born and raised. That's what I went for. Yeah. <clears throat> cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm 
Coke 90% of the time, but if there's no Coke and there's Pepsi, I have no problem with Pepsi. Absolutely. <laughs> and I know they, they passed that one up a lot. And uh, I think it's more you go south, they'll probably have more Pepsi, to be honest. That's what mm. I think. So Interesting. I never even really looked at it that, that far, that deep. It could be. It could just been the restaurant, too. They just said, we only serve Pepsi. We don't have Coke, that sort of thing. So, I mean... It's like a, it's like a to each his own that sort of saying. So if restaurants want to just do Pepsi, that's their choice. So, okay, one more question. It's not even <laughs> on my list, but I just wanted to um, put oh, it I think out I'm there. I'm going to charge you extra now. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> what what would be your perfect date night? Perfect date, huh? I can know how the story ends. It always ends with a little nice rough action afterwards. But uh, <laughs> I would say me and my girl just having to go maybe see a show, for instance. We'll just say it's been around the city I'm in, Pittsburgh, for instance. Go see a show, maybe enjoy a nice dinner and stuff like that. And then uh, I think really enjoying time together to maybe share a nice kiss under the moonlight for instance and then come to come back to the room have a nice little rough action afterwards <laughs> nice not holding anything back that's cool oh uh, no <laughs> i mean hey i'm honest i mean that was another strength too i'm pretty honest so that's why i probably would not fit in the cia very well i probably get so many government <laughs> secrets away i'd be probably terrible at that kind of job so yeah <laughs> Very cool, man. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned a little bit more about Brian. Um, Brian, the person, not just the drummer, uh, but also the drummer. Uh, if you want to know more about him, you can check him out on his channel. Again, link in the description. Is there anything else you want to talk about, get off your chest or whatever, about the drumming community, about life in general? All right, now you're just copying me. And that's not fair. <laughs> uh, think to the audience... Don't stick to one side of a certain argument. You have to see things from both sides. For instance, I'll believe everything that kind of draw in the media, so I'm sorry I'm going to take heat for this, but don't believe everything that Fox News says. Make sure you also know what CNN and those guys are also saying, too. Then you try to form your conclusion based on what they're trying to get at. So Some people just love to make noise, and it's the thing that gets your attention, too, because maybe it's more dramatic or it's something that gets the emotions going, stuff like that. And that's not the right way to do it. You have to look at what sort of ev evidence you have, or I guess anything that you can consider to be like evidence or various truths too. And you mold those together to form into your philosophy, belief, and stuff like that. So that'd be the biggest thing I tell my folks out there. Cool. All righty. Well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Brian, it was a pleasure having you on talking drums truck talking life and uh getting to know you better um anything you've got coming on your channel that uh we should know about i released uh my one interview on monday with uh tom counts aka preach rocks and uh that one was just released it was like it's doing well and everything i tend to do monday wednesday and friday and i would like to get back into live streaming too which i'm trying to figure out how to make that one work out because originally I just wanted to do three videos a week. Just do it that way. I want to be in the live stream, but I think I might have to change around. So I have to work that out. But regardless, uh, tomorrow I'm actually releasing a drum cover. I'm not going to spoil it just yet. I'm going to wait for people to see it. And actually this one, but this one I will spoil. I did do a drum collaboration with five other drummers. Uh, Mike Few had put it together, and that was a Billy Ray Cyrus uh, talk some. So I'm going to share his video and put that on my channel for Friday. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping to get this thing up as soon as possible and uh, let the let the Cam Can Drum world know a little bit more about Brian Gribben. So uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much, Kelly. You take care, brother. Yeah, you too, man. Take it easy. Stay tuned. <laughs>